The auction method of marketing is alive and well. Auctions come in all types, sizes, and platforms, but one thing is for sure. It takes more than a cowboy hat and talking fast to be an auctioneer. Welcome back. You know, every few months we try to bring you some information about our Carolina Auction Academy and the news that's going on there and in some of our other programs. And it's exciting today because we have a chance for you to meet some of our instructors. You know, we've always told you that the one number one reason people attend auctions is that they are fun. So we have two of our fun instructors here with us today. We're going to give you an opportunity to meet with Kevin Winchester, who works with Carolina Auction Academy, among other duties, and with our brand new real estate instructor, Steve Robinson. So uh, let's get started. Kevin, <laughs> glad to have you. Glad to be here. Thanks for asking me over. Well, we understand that in addition to being an auctioneer, you have lots of other skills and just won a major award. Can you tell us about that? Well, I can tell you a little bit. I, I don't know if skills are the proper term for what I do. My dad always said that you know, I was more a jack of all trades and master of none, so I think that's probably it. But yeah, we recently won an award. One thing that I, I uh, I'll say it's a hobby, is that I like to write. I write fiction, and that's, uh, I've managed to parlay that into a career. I teach over at Wingate University. And I recently had a short story that won the Thomas Wolfe Fiction Award for 2013, and that was just a process of uh, you submitted stories, and it was a blind submission, so uh, we had to submit. It was judged on, I suppose, the merits of the story. So I had a nice prize for that and a lot of recognition, so it's had some good things. And that actually will appear in the Thomas Wolf Review magazine uh, at the end of this month. And what was the name of the story? The name of the story was, it, it, I th if I can remember how they ran it, um, <laughs> It was waiting on something to happen, is, is the final title that we settled upon. Okay, okay. Very good. Well, we understand you have some other talents other than teaching at Carolina Auction Academy. And by the way, folks, Kevin's been with us since we opened in 2005. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've taught him how to go from CB radios to <laughs> cell phones as he teaches technology. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that's an ongoing joke with our students. But yeah. We have a core team of eight instructors, and we're yeah. proud of all of them. But in addition to writing, uh, you're a musician, correct? Uh, yes, I've, I've played music since I was very, very young. My grandmother actually taught me to play uh, when I was probably five or six years old, first couple of songs. So uh, I've always played, uh, come from a musical family. So, And I play, currently I'm playing in a band called the Flatland Tourist, which we do uh, roots music. Americana is, is the term, but it's sort of old country, uh, some old blues, that sort of thing. Uh, predates rock and roll, probably. Uh, before that, we do, we, we do a lot of our own material, a lot of original material. And before that, uh, I was in a band called Chicken Bone, which also <laughs> was an Americana band, but we were more bluegrass based. We were a string band. Mm -hmm. um, had a uh, couple of CDs out on a small label called Little King Records out of Asheville. And we played uh, in that band for several years. I actually played for one of the auctioneer conventions a few years back, if you remember that. Yes, I do. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it, that truly is a hobby because, you know, you never make any money playing music. So, uh, but uh, I've done that for quite a while. Okay. So we have the writing, we have the music, yeah. we have your auctioneering skills. And uh, you've shared with the students before one of the strangest things you ever had was a, a unique auction uh, that involved perfume. Would you tell yeah. us about that? <laughs> yeah, we... Um, I got a phone call several years ago when I was in the auction business full time and uh, they, uh, the gentleman on the phone said I have some perfume bottles for sale and my first thought was Avon perfume bottles which are, as you know being in the business are not really what you want for an auction. Uh, but he says yeah I have quite a few of them. He says I probably have three or four hundred and I think I'd like for you to do an auction of all of them. So I thought if they're Avon bottles usually we would put 10 or 15 of those in a box and sell the entire box for two dollars but he kept talking about it and he says well i have several of these that are you know worth fifteen hundred two thousand dollars so that got my interest naturally 
So I rode over there, and he was he was correct. His entire house was furnished in in perfume bottles. Um, back in the seventies, we when you got your first apartment, you would get milk crates and buy a board, and you'd use that for your put your stereo and your albums on. He had done that for perfume bottles. Every room in the house, every surface in the house, uh, small ones like so. To the, there were several that were four or five feet tall. And uh, he convinced me to do that auction, and I did one entire sale of nothing but perfume bottles, and I did it online, uh, and it was a live auction, and I had nobody come to the sale at, at the gallery. There was nobody there at all. So uh, the entire auction was conducted online, and that was not the intent originally, but it did very well. We shipped perfume bottles to Australia, Japan, all over the country. It was a unique experience. It did very well, and I never would have thought that before. Right. It was strange. Yeah, very yeah. strange, yeah. And that's the beauty of the auction industry. You yeah. never know what you're going to come up with, and that's why we say auctioneers are problem solvers. <laughs> and uh, you certainly solved that problem, yeah. but especially when you had no one show up at the auction, the yeah, live auction. Yeah. That could cause fear and trembling, right? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, I was a little concerned, but, yeah. but it worked out well for everybody. He yeah. got rid of the collection. We made a little money on it, and some people got some, some nice finds in perfume bottles. Yeah. Very good. Well, we've talked also to the audience, but in school we talk about the other jobs that are related to the auction yeah. industry because sometimes people come to auction school, go through the whole yeah. class, pass the test, and they say, but I don't really want to call bids. Sure. And so we try to encourage people to sign up for the course if you want to become a better consumer, know what you're doing Absolutely. when you go to auctions, uh, maybe work the ground, be a clerk. Yeah. And Ivan's specialty is the ASS, the yeah. auction setup specialist. So there are a lot of other opportunities oh, yeah. within that. Um, and that leads us into another category. We have a lot of our auction students who go on and get their real estate license. And we mm -hmm. have real estate brokers who see the auction method of marketing as another tool in their tool belt. So that's why I had you two gentlemen here today to talk with us. Uh, after many, many years, our uh, lead real estate instructor decided to retire uh, last semester. And we're fortunate to have Mr. Robinson come and uh, fill in uh, in a whole new way. Uh, it's the timing is good because the states changed some things now and you have to take a state and a national exam mm. but um, he is certainly not new to teaching real estate he's just new to Stanley County and so we welcome you and like you tell us a little bit about your teaching background and what what interests you in teaching real estate to other potential brokers well thank you thank you very much for having me I um, I guess the the crux of it began uh, honestly, in about the late 70s, my dad had a real estate business that he opened in a little town called Mount Holly, uh, with which you might yeah. be familiar. Yes. And of course, I would come home from grade school every day and got to hang out and uh, watch everybody in motion. And uh, so it's kind of in the blood. And I remember when I was about to get out of high school, he says, you know, you should just go get a real estate license, you know, just keep it. You never know if you're going to have to need yeah. it, you know, use it or something. And so. Uh, sure enough, I went and got the real estate license. That was uh, kind of back in the uh, dawn of time, I mean, <laughs> a long time ago. For some of <laughs> our students, it was. <laughs> right. yeah. But um, so I, I dabbled in that for a little bit of time and, uh, and had lived in Northern Virginia for a time as well and actually uh, began uh, a construction job there rebuilding uh, torn down Pennsylvania farmhouses. Oh. A developer had gone, of course, to, uh, to the upstate of Pennsylvania and taken several of those farms down, brought them back to a little town called Leesburg, Virginia, and uh, I was a carpenter's apprentice there. And so I kind of had the carpentry thing going, I had the real estate thing going, and uh, went back to Northern Virginia, did more contracting work and, uh, and property management. Came back, uh, I'd say about the mid-90s or so, and began selling and building real estate in earnest and had taken a road uh, a little unconventional to say the least <laughs> in the form of manufactured modular homes. Uh, it, this was back in the day when everybody, you know, the, the stigma is still strong, but it was even stronger back then and financing was just an absolute bear. And so we had put several places, uh, um, put them up and um, gotten people FHA loans, North Carolina uh, financing assistance loans on manufactured homes, permanent, 
uh, appreciating pieces of real property, really unconventional. But um, at one point, we hit a bit, a bit of a snag and uh, with a particular piece of property where everything jived and it all came together and it was working on paper just fine, but some mm. of the, uh, the nearby folks weren't in total agreement. And by the time all the dust had settled, everything finished the way it should, but there were a couple of hiccups. And at that point, I said, you know what, by golly, people mm. need to know more about this. Yes. And so I sat down and I wrote a uh, continuing ad elective on manufactured and modular homes, how they're built, how you can finance them, pictures, everything, uh, the PowerPoint, the whole spiel, and took it to the, uh, the Real Estate Commission. A, a lovely lady named Pam Rory uh, uh, up Pam's there in Raleigh had greeted me there and had been gracious enough to not only approve the course, but also offer me to teach it. And I'm looking around, I'm like, well, Pam, I, I Okay, <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you say so. So next thing you know, I'm, I'm teaching it uh, on my own in places across the state. And uh, I ran into another lady um, who was in charge of the uh, pre and post licensing uh, with the Real Estate Commission at the time. And she stopped me. She said, well, you're teaching this. Why don't you, uh, why don't you just do pre and post licensing? Okay, <laughs> that's fine, all right, and uh, started to do that, and I was getting ready to go and ran into uh, to Bill Gallagher, and he came to me um, at a uh, conference down in South Carolina, and he says, you're going to be teaching next year, and I said, I, I, I figure I'll do a few classes, and he says, well, how many? How many are you going to do? Yeah, that's and I said, Bill. I'll, I'll probably yeah. do about three, maybe four, and he says, would, would 22 be too many? <laughs> I was like, well, no, I don't guess so. That's cool. So I started to work with Bill in uh, the very beginning of 2003 in uh, Charlotte and Raleigh. So I was going back and forth to Raleigh and uh, getting things started up there. And it, uh, it was a, a very, very enjoyable time because I was able to do continuing ed as well. And during that time, of course, I was teaching my CE course, but I was also writing uh, other continuing ed courses that Pam was gracious enough to uh, approve as well. So there were several titles that I'd gone through there. Ran into a, a, a nice lady named Marie Spodak, uh, whom you may know from some of our conferences. She is a, a big writer for Dearborn Publishing oh. uh, out of Chicago. And she said, I think you have a really good topic with this manufactured thing. Would you like to write uh, a text for me for Dearborn? And so we sat down and uh, started trading uh, emails and stuff between each other. And uh, eventually we got it published uh, through Dearborn and it was offered for several years and uh, that was that was kind of fun but as you you probably know you don't make a pile of money in writing right. you say look my name's on that right. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, suffice it to say after um, after moving to Georgia and uh, actually moving to South Beach Miami where I worked uh, uh, for a luxury hotel as a chef uh, for a time, I decided what the heck, I might as well uh, get back to what I know and my wife and I moved back here to, uh, to North Carolina and uh, you and I had run into each other at some of the conferences and I kept everything all up to snuff and uh, you were kind enough to, uh, to offer me an opportunity. I'm just really stoked to, yeah. to dive back in because, you know, I, I knock on wood, uh, my, my students uh, that I'd had were just tenacious. They really, really were all the time that I was teaching. I'm very, very fortunate. Um, but I, I think a, a lot of that, a lot of the subject matter is just so much, mm -hmm. so much to digest in such a short period of time in all candor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what we, you know, we have to offer and whatnot in terms of sheer time. But when it's all said and done, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so truly, you just have to accept and, and take charge of the idea and make the commitment. This is my life mm -hmm. for the next several weeks, if not months, yeah. you know, if I mean for this to happen and this change to transpire. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I've, I've seen those results in students and I've been very, very happy with that and been, you know, very fortunate with some of the, the feedback from the commission. God bless them and their patients. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so. yes, excellent. And you mentioned our well-known legend in North Carolina, Bill Gallagher. Yes, I'm sure working with him, I had the yes. opportunity to do that myself with mm -hmm. some electives and uh, he's quite a guy. He's and, a great uh, fellow, <laughs> absolutely. Fast pace is the oh, only yeah. speed he goes. That's so right. That, that's good. But, that's right. Um, we're just pleased to have both of you gentlemen with us. You know, the, the programs are only as good as the instructors and keeping the students motivated. 
And I think you share a lot of the common interest that good instructors have a variety of things in their background. You know, you're both writers. You know, you were talking about music as we mm -hmm. were coming in. So mm -hmm. um, just a lot of different things to bring to make the classes exciting, interesting, and still help the students get what they need. And uh, we're pleased to have you both at Stanley Community College. And uh, we'll continue on uh, for our public. The next class of pre-licensing, you can join with Steve. It starts on January 14th. It meets on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Uh, we also have post-licensing classes that are available on Fridays. And we can do continuing education for um, real estate brokers. If there is a need out there, just let me know. Our next class of Carolina Auction Academy is coming up soon. It starts on Monday, January 27th. And we look forward to having people there, too. I uh, did talk with a friend over the holidays, and he said he was going to give that course to his wife for Christmas because she always loved going to auctions, and he wanted her to know what she was doing. So it's not necessarily a path where you have to take the state exam and become a licensed auctioneer, but we know you'll have fun in both of these classes. You'll learn a lot, and so do yourself a favor. Sign up for one of them or both. Thank you. Until next time. At Carolina Auction Academy, students learn about the rules, regulations, laws, marketing, contracts, product knowledge, and ethics, and much more in addition to bid calling. But it is a fun class and a great learning experience. We have two sessions each year, one in August and one in January, with class size limited to 20. Why not think about joining us? For more information, contact Carolina Auction Academy at 704-991-0200 